Hey guys, Kevin here. This video is for those people who want to make your own printer. For example, a DTG printer, uh, or a cake printer, or maybe the industrial printer. When you do printer, uh, you have to deal with uh, those optical uh, encoders. Today, I'm going to show you how to work with a uh, uh, disk uh, optical encoder. You can see on the disk, there's little marks. When the disk rotate, the mark is going to deflect the sunlight, and not sunlight, it deflect the light. If you don't have the background, just Google optical encoder. There are lots of uh, uh, articles explain how it works. Basically, you have one side, you have LED that shines a light, and the other other side uh, receive it. Uh, today's sensor, today's sensor is from Epson, uh, which is uh, they have uh, two photo sensor on this side. So you will not only measure the speed, you can also measure the direction of the rotation. Uh, don't worry about the concept right now. Uh, I'm going to show you, and it's really easy to understand later. This disk is mounted on the other side of a uh, uh, motor. When the motor shaft rotates, uh, the disk also rotates. Here's the encoder. And uh, you can see one side is emitter, and another one uh, is received uh, light. And uh, there, notice the out output, there are four pins. Uh, you get one pin for the ground, and uh, one pin for the power, for the VCC. And uh, then you left two more pins. And the one pin is, uh, the, is for the sensor A, another pin is for the sensor B. It doesn't really matter which one, which is A, which is B. When you program, you're going to find out uh, really easily. And all those units are built together, and uh, I use a Mabuchi F uh, FK130SH uh, motor, and uh, you can find it at uh, bchtechnology.com, and uh, go to printer parts and Epson and motor. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, this DIP91 optical encoder. And uh, in the encoder, uh, if you need uh, any files uh, that we're going to talk about today, just click the Arduino sketch sketches, and it will bring you all the code that we're going to cover. If you don't have uh, Arduino or never have never had uh, any experience with it, uh, go to Am Amazon and uh, search Arduino Start Kit, and uh, just buy the cheapest. And uh, today we're going to use this one has the main board and also has that power regulator. Uh, for example, I have this new project that I need a RGB sensor to tell the color on the substrate. So I need this RGB sensor, it's another $10. And a couple more things, maybe $50 later, I can build a machine that, that right now is selling for about $1,000. Uh, just to give you some hint, oh, it's more than $1,000. That's how much it cost. Okay, you got your Uno board. And uh, don't worry about it, you don't understand it. Just uh, pay attention. The side, it has a bunch of numbers, like one, two, three, four, and those are the pins. Uh, I made a little bit of homemade uh, adapter cable for, for those four pins coming out of from the optical sensor. The cable is from the original uh, Epson cable. So Epson uses one white wire. They already tell you this is ground, OK? the ground. So now we have three three wires left. The middle one is the power. So the middle one was supposed to uh, plug in some kind of power, power source. Then left and right, they are pin A and pin B. For the board, you plug in your computer's USB cord. And those two pins are going to provide power. Uh, one is a 3.3 volt, one is 5 volt. And you can use any of those uh, grounds as ground. And those number pins you can use either as input or output. So our first plan is uh, connect the white wire, the ground, to the ground. And then we, con uh, we connect the middle, uh, the red wire, to the 3 volts. Uh, you can connect 5 volts. I try 5 volts works too. And uh, then the two data pin, we just connect to pin number two and number three, and then we tell the computer uh, we're going to input something and let the computer show us. 
Okay, white to the ground, middle to the power, the three volts, and uh, left over one to the uh, the two pin, one to the three pin. This software is free download, and uh, you can get it from the your kit, the the kit you bought from uh, from Amazon. So first, we tell the computer we put uh, the pins A in two, pin B in three. The rotary position is the reading come from uh, from pin A, and uh, that I'm just uh, have a variable to hold it. And uh, the previous uh, reading uh, of the pin A, I'm, I'm saving as a rotary previous position. So when I compare the two position, I know if the disk is turned or not. So in the setup, we tell the computer that we're going to read from pin A, and also I'm going to we're going to read from pin B. And we're going to start a serial communication, so we, we know what's going on. Rest of, and the rest of setup is just a couple of prints and show us. The loop is the board going to execute forever, and they just keep looping. So when, when I see the previous value and the recent value changed, we know uh, the disk has been rotated. So I'm, I'm going to uh, just print the output and tell us the position of the two pins. So we click Upload, and that's going to upload the code into the board. Remember, we use a server begin to uh, start our communication with the board. So we can open up uh, the serial window. So you can see the first part of the code executed. So now uh, when I turn up the disk, the, the computer compare two values. If they're different, and only they're different, than the previous value, uh, is print out this uh, I print out this A B position. So say if I turn it one way, it always, the two value always the same. But if I turn it the other way, and uh, the value will be different. That's that's how you detect the direction of the turning. So now we can detect exactly when the disk turned, and uh, the direction of turning. And we can calculate speed, and we can do all sorts of things. Okay, uh, that program will work really well if you compare. Doesn't do anything else. Just sitting there waiting for you to turn the disk. In reality, your computer is going to do a whole bunch of things, and uh, so when they when it do other things, you turn the disk, and uh, you it's not going to record it. To be able to record all the changes, you need something called interrupt. Okay, here's the second script. It sounds really fancy, but it's really easy to understand. Interrupt means stop whatever you're doing and do the thing I'm telling you to do right now. Okay, so first thing we need is something called volatile int. That means、uh, this number always changes, and、uh, we're going to use this number, this variable to store the number of marks the the disk turned. After that, it's、uh, easy.、Uh, pin A is two,、uh, pin B is three, and here we define an interrupt function to tell the computer what to do when there's interrupt. So we read from pin A to a variable I A. We read uh, into uh, uh, the B into I B. If the two numbers equal, so there's one direction. If it's not equal, there's another direction. Every time it gets interrupted, the number of marks increase by one.、Uh, the setup is still same.、Uh, set a serial and connection. Pin A and pin B are input, and here is the function attach interrupt.、Uh, that tells computer I need an interrupt, and the zero is the port zero, and、uh, the zero always、uh, connect to pin number two on the Arduino board Uno. And、uh, if you use、uh, like a mega or something, you have to check、uh, which which zero go to. So always put zero there, and、uh, physically will connect. Also always connect to your interrupt pin into the into number two. The SR is the SR function we defined. If we define the function as an other name, let's、like、Kevin, then here we have to write this as Kevin. 
the word change means uh, I don't care if it's changed from zero to one or one to zero and uh, give me interrupt. Uh, you can also use the word uh, rising or, f or falling. And uh, however, that only change or the direction, like uh, for example, is rising is from zero to one. So but in this case, uh, we know uh, it, it, can, it can change uh, both directions. So we use the word change. In the loop, uh, you can compare to last loop. In the loop, just one, one thing and just print a number of marks. That is, that is the whole point. Uh, in the loop, you do whatever you want, and uh, and uh, just whenever the the pin A changes the voltage, the system immediately jump into the interrupt uh, routine and do the interrupt, and then come back to you. So you'll never miss a moment that uh, you turn the disk. And here is how it look like. So if I turn really really fast, uh, between the printing and the number already added. Okay, we did this part. Now we're going to throw in the motor. Uh, you cannot drive the motor directly from the from the Uno board. Uh, it, although Uno has the power source, uh, but uh, the uh, the reverse current from the motor is going to fry this board in a second. So we're going to use a a little ch a controller chip. And uh, this ch what this chip does is uh, it takes the little current from the Uno board and uh, control the really really big current on the uh, on the motor. I'm going to use this L293D as example. As you can say that ten of them is like eight dollars. If you do a lot of these things, uh, I suggest uh, L298N, uh, which uh, is a little bit better than this. We'll put a chip on the breadboard. Uh, here's how the breadboard works. Uh, on both sides, there are power and uh, ground. So all those ones are connected. So you put one in the ground, they are all grounded. And uh, the one below it, the red, the red line, is the power. So you put a power source there. Uh, anybody need a power, you can just attach to that power, and uh, you're going to get that power. For example, I need a 9 volt here. I can just uh, connect a line from the 9 volt to the to the 9 volt power. All those columns, the four of those, they are connected vertically. So they're all connected. So if I want to connect uh, uh, anyone to this leg, I can connect uh, any of uh, those three slots left. And uh, here is how this chip works. The chip has a dent here. Underneath the dent is number one, and uh, then number two and number three. Uh, those two legs should go to the ground, and uh, or you can connect to a really large uh, uh, heat sink. So it's not really used, it's uh, used as ground. Number one is enable. Uh, basically, you plug in your computer, give a, then you can use your computer to give a value. Uh, for example, 255 is the high speed. And uh, you give a, to a speed, of, you get a zero, then the motor going to shut off. <coughs> um, basically, I think it's a speed control. And then those are two, uh, two legs that I can connect with the blue line. And they are for directions. So you put one of them in high, one of them in low, it goes to one direction. Uh, if you go vice versa, if you put another one high, this one low, it's go to a different direction. I just control the direction of the motor turning. So those three lines, the enable line and those two lines, uh, control the speed and control the direction. The furthest to the right is the one and uh, the right line, uh, which you control the uh, not control, on uh, which you connect to the high power. You can uh, connect to uh, nine volts or twelve volts power. So we only got uh, two uh, legs not connected. Those two legs uh, go to the DC motor. Uh, it really doesn't matter w w which direction it goes, uh, because you can control the direction. You can see we only used half the chip. It's because uh, actually this chip is designed for two motors. You can control another motor on the other side. Uh, for this speed control, you find uh, you need to uh, just use one with a squeaky, squeaky symbol next to the uh, next to the number. Then two wires to give directions. Then ground. 
then put those two blue ones to the motor. And the last one is for the power to the motor. Your Arduino package comes with a power adapter. This is really cool. We can connect to a 9 volt battery. And you can fit right on the breadboard. Then it powers on both sides of, of the breadboard. And also you can control the voltage of each one. So for example, I want this to be a 3 volt. You just move the pin to the 3, connect the two pins on the 3, three volt side. Uh, this time I'm going to use the 5 volt. It's a little bit underpowered for this, uh, for this motor, uh, but that's all I have. Okay, let's start. Um, pretty easy, number marks. And this time I also calculate the number of turns because there are too many marks and it will be, uh, the, it will be overflowing. And uh, the motor enable is at pin 11. Uh, enable is the one that can you control speed. And uh, then the two other like uh, control the direction at the 10 and 9. Then from the optical, pin A is on the 2 and the pin B at the 3. And remember the interrupts for the Uno board, you have to put on the 2. And here's the interrupt function. I read uh, uh, from a uh, optical pin A and optical pin B, if they equal, is one direction. If they're not equal, there's another direction. And uh, I, uh, if a number of marks is more than 100, that means a one full rotation. I just set to zero. And then I add, I add, increase the number of turns by one. And the setup is just a boilerplate uh, pin. Uh, uh, this pin is input, that pin is output. Attach the interrupt and give me a serial uh, communication. And motor A, motor B are uh, going to control the direction. So one is high, um, another one must be low. However, I can just put it in the setup because we do not change the direction in this example. And uh, here I define a variable i i, uh, which I use the i i to control the speed. So I assign an I to the maximum, then one is larger than 125. Why 125 is because I found this motor stalls if it's lower than 125. Uh, but yeah, maybe I should give a higher voltage so it won't stall, but uh, you can try it with a larger, uh, larger voltage. So it's going to start with high speed, then get a slower and slower every time by step of 10. And I output the ii value, which is the arbitrary number you give to the you give to the enable wire. Uh, remember the speed um, that we use here. It just that the arbitrary number is not actually turns. Uh, it is just arbitrary number from one to two twenty five. We give to the motor. Uh, give to the controller, but the number of turns is the one that you actually calculated from your uh, interrupt function. Uh, next example, we're going to use this one as a step motor. Uh, the step motor, the step motor is not like RC motor. Step motor have more wires and uh, more complicated and. Uh, uh, the advantage of step motor is it can precisely control the angle it turns. And uh, so it's used for the 3D printing. However, it's more bulky and it's more expensive. So here I define an IX uh, for, to control the marks. So basically I turn the motor off by giving that wire, but it enable wire up at zero voltage. And then I say, if you can record one mark, stop. Then the next time you record two marks, you stop. Then three marks, you stop. So that's going to control precisely uh, how much the motor can turn. Let's say it works. Hey, pretty cool stuff. Uh, if you like uh, this kind of video, please click like. Uh, otherwise, if I see a thousand people watched it, but there's only like 10, 20 likes, I might just stop making those videos. Instead, I'll make a video for me eating a pie or uh, do a TikTok dance. I hope you like this video. Uh, the emphasis on like. And uh, please visit us at www.bchtechnologies.com or locally, Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers.